Hallelujah. Oh, it's going to take you back, let you reminisce, praise God, from the day and the time that the Lord saved you. Hallelujah. I can remember the day, 19 and some years, when I gave my life over to the Lord, and things have never been the same. Even when I thought I was big enough to do what I wanted to do, <laughs> he still came back and restored me. Even when I thought I didn't need him to do what I was doing, he still came back and restored me. Where would I be? He only knows. Ooh, and I'm glad he sees me through the eyes of love. Yes. Lord, if we could just see everybody through the eyes of love. Yes. Hmm. Sometimes we feel we got to see them through the eyes of patience. <laughs> How much can I deal with you? And then I'll deal with you on that level. That's about as much love as I'm going to give you. But, but he said, I see you through my eyes. What man see, I don't see. I see your heart. Because man's looking on the outward appearance. Good morning, y'all. Who I thank you, Lord. Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? If not for grace that saved me. Mm. Nothing that I did, nothing fancy, nothing I paid for, nothing I asked for, his grace was there waiting on me. Yes. It was always there. Yes. I just had to get to the place of accepting it. Yes. Hallelujah, you don't understand his grace, I tell you to accept it today. His grace is powerful. Yes. It's powerful, it's life changing. Oh, let us go before the throne this morning. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I continue to thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you, God, because there's nothing that I did but that you love me enough. That you love us enough to save us. Lord God, that you called us into your kingdom for such a time as this. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you. Your goodness and your mercy is everlasting. You know, today is the last day for, uh, today is the last day of the fire. Now, today is the last day of speaking about the fire, but the fire is going to be here forever. Yes. It's going to be here forever, but we're going to end the fifth Sunday of the month, which is casual Sunday for Word of Life, in case y'all was just wondering. Did we lose our mind this morning? It's casual Sunday. I look forward to fifth Sunday, praise God. <laughs> One Sunday, fifth Sunday, we're going to have a pajama day. Just come out of bed just like you are. Just show up. <laughs> Sometimes it takes too much effort to get dressed. Just show up. And let's have church. And let's have, huh, let's have church. Praise God. We're going to talk about the fire this morning. I promise you I ain't going to be before you long. But I tell you, I thank God Pastor initiated this because the more you study about the fire, the more the fire you want. And the more the fire that God will give you if you just ask for what you want. Oh, my sister always says, you have not because you ask not. But usually she be relating to money. Can I borrow $20? I'm like, girl, quit asking for $20. You have not because you ask not. But today we're going to ask for the fire, amen? Because we want and desire the fire of God to be with us always. Not just in the church, but out of the church, praise God. But we're going to talk about the fire keeper. Is that all right? And you may ask, well, who's the fire keeper? Help me, somebody. Who's the fire keeper this morning? The Holy Ghost. Yes. With fire. Praise God. There's the Father, there's the Son, and then there's the Holy Ghost. Full of fire. Ready to impart that to you today if you're lacking or you, or you feel like your tank is a little lower or the devil done told you, well, you ain't got what they got. Oh, he's wrong this morning. Because God says, I can do all things. And then not only that, he said exceedingly and abundantly more than what you can even ask or think. That's our God. We tend to forget sometimes we try to dummy him down and say he can do just enough to get me through the day, but that's not right. He can do all things. Even more than you can even think, he says, I can do it. Yeah, you can do all things. You just have to believe it. Amen, my sister. You just have to believe it. So we're going to start off with Acts 2. 
in the Amplified, first through the sixth verse, familiar passage of scripture to get us started. I pray right now in Jesus' name, God, you hold me down. You use the words that you want to use, God, that I step back, Lord God, I, that I decrease, that you may be elevated in this house today, God. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise because you are so worthy. You are yet worthy. Hallelujah. 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 We come against any spirit of offense in this house today, God. We come against anything that tries to hinder the word of God today. We come against anything and anyone that think that they can take down the, the, the power and the anointing of God that flows through this place. God, we thank you for liberty and freedom in this house because where the spirit of God is, there is yet liberty. Amen. Now, why would God put that there if he didn't want you liberated? Why would he put that there if you want to stay bound? Why would he put that there if you want to come in and act like I can't cut loose because that ain't God? Oh, that's God. And, and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I'm going to put it out there that Jeremiah said, it's just like fire shut up in my bones. Yes. So, you know, when you're a little child and your parents tell you don't touch the stone because it's hot, and you touch it anyway, <laughs> and you back up because it's, it's hot and you burn yourself, that's fire, that's heat, that's power. Yes. So to say that I have the anointing but I don't have the fire is a contradiction. Wow. What I have when I won't let the fire be released is <laughs> selfishness and stubbornness and hard-heartedness because I'm gonna do it my way, not as God said. But if it's like fire shut up in your bone, you ought to get excited sometimes. The thing the world don't need to see is a bunch of deadhead saints. Forgive me, I'm sorry. But they're looking for something different. But if we're looking like them, how do we draw them? Acts 1 and 6, I give y'all time to get it then. Okay, amen. Amplify first. We're going to talk about the day of Pentecost. Familiar passage that we all know. We all talked about, but I wonder if we was there. Just imagine if we was there that day. What would it have been like? If we were there that day and the Holy Spirit came into the camp, into the camp, what would we be like today? Would we be left over in the corner by ourselves on the side because I don't want to be like them? Or I don't want that to fall on me? Let it fall on you, but don't fall on me because, let's read. Okay, it says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. It didn't say synagogue, it didn't say church, it said in the house. So you mean to tell me that the Holy Ghost and fire can fall in your house? Amen. You pull a bunch of fire baptized folks in a place and let them free and the Holy Spirit going to meet us there? Jesus, fill the house. And three says, there appeared to them tongues resembling fire which were distributed among them, and they rested on each one of them as a person received the Holy Spirit. It rested on each one of them as those received the Holy Spirit. Now, I know that there's some, you know, we're not going to argue the point is tongue still for today. Yes, it is, because God is still for today. But I know that it's uncomfortable for some people, but if you ain't never tried it, don't knock it. When I, I, I was young in the church, and, and, and then it was a Pentecostal church back then, and, and I desired what somebody else had, and they were speaking in tongues, and I, God, I want that. If that's going to get me talking to you, that's what it says, the holy language, I want that. And I remember us going to a, a, a camp meeting or revival or something in Albany, Georgia, and that's when uh, Creflo, Creflo Dollar was, you know, small. He didn't have a mega church back then. <laughs> He was out trying to start, you know, his ministry. And, and he said, uh, if you want the gift of tongues, we're going to pray in the back. 
So the group that was with me, the church that you know we went uh, to this assembly, those that wanted the gift of tongues went in the back. So I get in the back and I'm looking for Preplo. I said, he said that if I wanted the gift of tongues, we gonna go to the back and, and we gonna pray. So where he at? He never showed up. But what he sent was his ambassadors. His men that he had trained in the gospel that knew that God can do exactly what he said he can do. So they lined up in front of everybody that was back there with me and they said, do you want the gift? And I said, yes. He said, start praying. What? He said, start praying. So I did what I thought I, I mean, I was young in the Lord. I did what I thought I was going to do. So I started praying. And he said, now speak. And tongues was still out. And I'm standing there thinking, what the, what, what the world? <laughs> and, and even when I say, you know, when your tank get low, you don't think God sees you and knows you is there with you. He never took that gift away. So when I got my mind right and I came back to where I needed to be and what he had called me to be, the gift just kept flowing. And, and, and then he taught me that there are more than one type of tongue. Okay, there's a gift of tongues and there's anointing of tongues. And then I can tell the difference. See, I can always pray in the gift of tongues whenever I want to because it's my gift that God gives it to me. And I, if I want to start praying in tongues, I just can. It ain't fake, it ain't phony. God said that I can do it. But I understand, too, when the power and anointing of God hits me and the tongues come out, it's no longer me but the Spirit of God. That fire we talked about, now it's him speaking with me, through me, to me. There's a difference. So it's set, it's set on each one of them, and then they receive the Holy Spirit. For it says, and they were all filled, that is, diffused throughout their being, infused, huh, infused, if you know what infused means, it was poured all the way from the head to the toe, into their beings. And they began to speak with tongues, then of a different language. Hmm. Now how do you do that unless it's God? As the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak clearly and appropriately. Can you imagine Peter start speaking Spanish, French, uh, Korean, and he like, I never took a class in my life. How can I do that? But God. Yes. Five says, now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout and God-fearing men from every nation under the heavens. And when this sound was heard, a crowd gathered. When the sound of the rushing mighty wind came and touched each and every one of them, and they all started speaking in tongues, and the people in the streets, I don't know how far, it doesn't say, but they heard it. God allowed them to hear it. Why? To bring them to a point that Peter could speak to them. And it says, and when this sound was heard, a crowd gathered, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing those in the upper room speaking in his own language. So God was calling men and women in their own language to a central location to hear the gospel. God is still calling people of all languages to a central location. <coughs> to hear the gospel. And he may not be using the sound to bring them, but he's using us to bring them. Amen? And he says, so the New Testament, New Testament uses several unique images to represent the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. One image shows the Holy Spirit as fire. On the day of Pentecost, following the sound of a rushing wind filling the house where the apostles were staying, what appeared to be tongues, a flame rested, fire rested on each one as they were filled. The power of God rested on each one. That power still resonates in us. Release it. Let it go. Let it be used. Don't hold it dormant. Let the fire burn. 
so those can see the glory of God and magnify God who is in heaven. Primarily, fire represents the presence of God. <clears throat> so every day we come, we should be calling down the fire from heaven. Because we want the presence. But what we have to start doing is once the presence comes, we don't send him back. We don't cut him off. We don't quench the spirit. But yet we go into the spirit. We talk about healing, and he says, my presence has come, then there's healing. There's deliverance. There's everything you need in the presence of God. Don't send them away. Hmm. Fire represents the presence. You know, sometimes we want to be, oh, I want to be like Moses and stand before God in the burning bush. No, you don't. <laughs> because what God gave Moses to do, some of us just don't want to do. Matter of fact, he don't, he don't even want to do something like himself he told us to do. But we want to stand before God. You know, we powerful like Moses, and I want to stand before God so the burning bush can be there, and I can tell people that I stood before God. You can tell people now. And you don't need a bush. He is the bush. He's in the fire that consumed the bush. Yeah. Tell people about him. That's what the fire does. Shelby and I was talking Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one of these days this Tuesday. And she was so excited about what God was telling her and what God had put into her and the vision that she had. She said, I'm sorry, Lorraine, I just can't, can't stop talking about it. I know that feeling. When the auction of God gets in you and burns you like that, you can't stop telling when people bring up a conversation about God. You don't want to stop talking about it. You don't want to say a few words and walk. You want to make sure that they have a good understanding and that you have a good understanding of what God is doing. No, oh, don't walk away. Don't walk away. Don't walk away. <laughs> so, whew. yes. The Spirit comes into our lives to transform us, cleaning and purifying us to become more like Christ. Yes. Every day. You know, I went through some things this week, and as I was as I was getting ready today, I I, I, I had to play my song. Y'all know my song, yes, Shekinah Glory. And, and the song always says, "I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. I, I remind me, Holy Spirit, of what I promised God I would do." You know, the old sanctified church says it's better not to make a vow than to make a vow to God and break it. I said I'll do what you want me to do. I, I'll go where you want me to go. I, I'll be what you want me to be. I, I told God all that. So, you know, I had to remind myself, regardless of what went on this week, <laughs> it ain't about you, it's about God. And, and how you represent him is not about you, it's about God. So whatever it is that's going on, you need to put it in the leg down at the altar. <laughs> and you keep doing what God has told you. See, see, the, the thing about the fire that burns inside of us, we want him to burn other folks. <laughs> burn them up, God. You know what they did to me. You know how they treated me, what they said about me, what they called me. You can burn them up, God. God said, no, I need to work on you. Let me burn up the things in you yes. that shouldn't be there. Yes. Hmm. Fire burns. Amen. So, so, so let's pray today and we say, Holy Spirit, enter into our lives today as you did with the believers on Pentecost. Cleanse and purify us so that we can radiate the glory of God to the world. So that we can radiate and let them see what God has placed inside of us. And all that he has placed inside of us needs to come out of us. Amen. They need to see, and, and this is another, this is another fight. <laughs> I'm not gonna plan on fighting today. This is another fight within the world when, when they try to put you in a box and say, you know, God didn't call y'all women to preach. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me on the day of Pentecost, there were men and women, and God allowed the Holy Spirit and fire to fall on the woman 
And then when she left, he said, okay, don't say nothing else. <laughs> don't, don't open your mouth. Uh, 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 husbands and wives was in, it was in, the, in the home that day, so help me understand. I'm going to put the fire in you, but I'm going to tell you not to speak about my goodness and my glory. Come on now. We can say if the women wasn't in the church, the church would be closed right now. Yeah, sorry, brothers. But, but understand, God is so powerful that he can't even use a woman even though he put the power inside of her. I'm confused. But that's a fight in the world. We ain't come to fight today. We just come to preach the word. Okay, so, so Joel says in Acts 2.17, in the last day, God says, now, now Joel is prophesying what God says. He says, in the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And the last time I checked, I was a people. I'm going to pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Now, prophesy meaning telling the, 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 the future of something that God has given you, a vision, a dream, or whatever, and speaking it through God. But prophesy also means preach. Tell the goodness of God. Yes. I, I, I didn't come to fight this morning, but I'm just trying to say that he said your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old folks. So Y'all going to dream dreams. That would have said, no, I ain't say that. He said that. And then in the book of Jeremiah 23 and 29, it says, Is not my word like fire? Now, now I, I, I come to... I've gotten older, and, and, and I remember when I was young in the Lord, everything that came across the pulpit, I believed. You know, Jenna mentioned Wednesday night that we got to go back to being like children because you tell the child something, nine times out of ten, they're going to believe what you say. Well, not the teenager, I'm talking about the young folks. <laughs> Teenagers don't believe nothing. But, but understanding that be childlike when you, you love like a child. You ever spank a child and the child came back and hugged you? You ever scolded a child and the child came back and said, I love you? You ever told a child, go in your room and don't come out till I call you when they came out, they smiling? God say, be childlike because children don't hold on to offense like grown people do. So the fire is supposed to get rid of those offenses. Yes. <laughs> but but Jeremiah 23 and 29 says, it's not my word like a fire declares the Lord. We discover that the word of God is likened to fire, and the Holy Spirit is also likened unto fire, meaning the word of God burns. Mm. The word of God burns. And, and, and this is not to, you know, again, we all came up with different denominations and, and different ways, you know, charismatic and Pentecostal and Baptist and Methodist. We all came up differently in our... our <clears throat> Thoughts and, and ways, or you know, are kind of grounded by how we came up. But but I just want to ask a question: Have you ever had the power of God hit you and knock you off your feet? If you ever had that experience, you can never tell me again that the Word of God is not like fire. That the power of God is not like fire. I remember being young and. I just had to do everything when I was young in the Lord. I must have got too old. I got to do better. <laughs> but I remember being young in the Lord, and the, and the worship was so powerful. Not the preaching, but the worship of God was so powerful in that church that it literally knocked me off my feet into the seat that I was in. And, 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 and it wasn't anything that I did because I, I was singing. I wasn't prepared for it, but I was hoping for it. God, I want that Holy Ghost in fire that, that, that they singing about. And it literally took me off my feet. So when things happen, you according to the word of God, it's hard for somebody to tell me God ain't real. Because you cannot convince me he's not. He's done too much. He's been too good. He's healed my body. He's fixed my finances. Oh, he made my home sweet again. Now I'm just praying for the grandchildren. Anyway, pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. But, but understand, when, you, when he said the word is like power, the power in the word, if we understood what power we have inside of us, when he 
said for you to take that word and apply it to your life. Mm. The power of his word. And then in the book of Luke 24, 23, it says, they asked each other, was not our hearts burning within while he talked with us on the road and opened up the scriptures to us? You mean to tell me even the scriptures of God is powerful? <laughs> Understanding here we are, if we were if we were those two men walking back and everybody saying, you know, they killed Jesus and they did this and they did that, and oh woe is me. Because we have those woe with me moments. Oh woe is me. And then they're walking, talking about what was, not looking for what is, as he told us it would be. And then he walks up on them and they didn't recognize him. Is it sometime when the Holy Spirit starts talking to us, we don't recognize him? We don't understand, because see a lot, don't talk about me, I'm talking about y'all. A lot of times when it speaks to me and it's good stuff, I love it. But sometimes when he speaks to me and it's chest out, when I be like, that can't be you, Lord. <laughs> But if it's just time for me to clean up myself, oh yes it can. Because his job is to purify me and to help me to stay whole and holy. But he said, didn't our hearts burn? And this is after the resurrection. The Holy Spirit and fire is imparting the word through these men who was walking to a maze. And he said, when we just Pouring out the scriptures in our heart. That's kind of like, you know, again, I keep referring back to my old Pentecostal days when the preacher would say something about you and you'll take and you'll, you'll say, let me put my feet up because he's talking about me. Let me pick my feet up because he's stepping on my toes. Yeah, they was having one of them kind of moments, if y'all know what I'm talking about. And then it goes on to say, one time Jeremiah said in chapter 20 and 9 that the word of God is like fire shut up in my bones. We want that kind of ministry today. We have to understand we're walking in the power and the anointing of God. We have to walk upright like we know it. I, I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been suffering with my, my left foot. Um, I, I, I said, I don't know what I did. It's, <laughs> I call it something, neuropathy or something, whatever. And so the day I got up and my husband told me, he said, you got to stop walking like that. Because <laughs> when I sit for a while or when I get up in the morning, you know, I kind of have to do this to kind of get that foot going. And I asked myself, I said, why ain't you praying over that foot? Why ain't you commanding that thing to go? And I just walked and said, because God's going to heal it. What am I praying for? Healing his mind, says the Lord. I am the God that heals you. What I have to do is believe that it's going to be him. I'm not going to beg my father for bread when he gives me a bread all the time. Yes. Now this is me, not you. Please don't do like, because there's something wrong with me. I keep telling y'all that. I got issues. But I believe God like that. I believe that he told me that I have it. I, I, I tell you another time. I remember one time I was here by myself. We were getting ready for praise and worship, and I would have to go back and forth to the booth. That's when we were using pages back in the day. And so my ankle was bothering me or something. There's that foot again. <laughs> and, and I was walking, and I'm talking to God as I'm walking back there and walking up, and I'm saying, God, how am I going to get up here tomorrow and, and sing praises and about what you can do and all that you can do when I'm hopping on this foot? How am I going to get up before your people and tell them that you will heal us when I'm walking like I'm walking? And that was just me and God now. That's me and God. And before I left the sanctuary that day, God healed me. Before I left the sanctuary that day, God healed me. See, Holy Ghost and fire brings a reaction. It may bring a praise. It may bring a worship. It may even bring a shout. But what it won't do is sit dormant. We've gotten so accustomed to hearing things about God that it don't affect us anymore. We done got a customer coming in and sitting down. Where is coming from? And okay, I've done my duty, and now it's time to go. But I want more than that. I can't be satisfied with 
just a little bit. I want it all. And if God says I can have it all, why would I settle for less? Why would I get comfortable not giving him all the glory? Regardless of how, regardless of this foot, regardless of the back, regardless of the hand, everything belongs to him. And when I say I give you all the praise and all the worship, I mean that. Because the word of God is good. It is great. It is powerful. But just as much as your worship to him. If God says, I seek a worshiper. I ain't talking about a singer. You know, people say, well, I can't worship. I'm not a singer. I ain't asking you to sing. I ask you to worship. There's a difference. You never utter a sound that anybody can hear. You can worship God in your spirit and allow him to infuse you with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, yes. He does that. You can't do that. Oh, according to the scriptures, we discover that the kingdom of God is surrounded by fire. Meaning that the church must walk in fire. The church must walk in the anointing of God is by the Holy Ghost and fire. There is nothing that we can't do. John spoke about Jesus in Matthew 3 and 1. He says, I indeed, that's the preacher, I indeed baptize you with the water upon repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Oh, we serve a mighty God. If you understand the revelation that he's a mighty God, he says, after me, he is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, John says, I don't even have enough oomph in me to tie his shoe. He is just that great. And we, us, <laughs> them, <laughs> have the audacity to choose how we're going to worship God. <laughs> John said, I can't even tie his shoe. He's so great. But I come in here and I say, I just don't feel like you today, God. <laughs> but yet I want the fire. Yet I want the healing. Yet I want the anointing. Oh, I want everything you got, God, but whew, I can't do all that. I can't do all that, God. All that raising of hand. <laughs> all that dancing to worship. <laughs> all that giving you the glory. <laughs> I can't do that now. <laughs> you know me. How many of us said that? That just ain't me. <laughs> that might be you. That ain't me. It don't matter. David said it don't matter. I'll get more undignified. When it comes to worshiping my God. See, I just made a choice. It doesn't matter what you do. I got to get it for myself. Yes. But he says, I'm not even worthy to bow down and tie his shoelaces. But he that comes behind me, he that has my back, he that stands up before me in the presence of my enemy, he that heals me when I'm sick, he that delivers me, he, he's a mighty God coming behind me that's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hmm. Believe for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Teresa. Believe for it. Yes. Hmm. Now, John tells us something. I never met the man. Well, I take that back. He met the man. Before he was born on this earth, he knew then he was baptized with the Holy Ghost <laughs> in his mother's womb. Yes, yes. So he was walking with the anointing, but he wanted to see the Savior. See, on our journey that we're on, we're walking toward the anointing because we want to one day see our Savior. 
And it's going to be the Holy Ghost and fire that gets up, us up out of here. Hallelujah. We're to be carriers of the fire. Not afraid, intimidated, or scared of what the enemy throws at us. And sometimes it's not even the enemy. It's just somebody who needs to know the word. Somebody who asks you a question. And the enemy allows fear to, no, no fear. I'm going to tell them about my God. And as you start telling them about God, the Holy Spirit rises up in you. And then he gives you those words that you need on that very same hour. Yes. No fear today. No fear. And, then, and we also understand most believers are unaware that there are two fires. There is a consuming fire that burns up the chaff and takes you as you fight against the enemies of God. See, we don't have enemies, technically, because God told us to love them, and you can't hate nobody that you love. But the adversary is the enemy to the kingdom that fights against us. So the consuming fire of God helps us fight off the enemy, and he burns those things up. And then there's the Holy Ghost and fire that's compassionate and loving and that visits, visits us and then just tells us, no, you can't do that. No, 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 you can't act that way. No, no, you can't treat them that way. You got to love them regardless. See, that's a different kind of Holy Ghost and fire. The anointing of fire can manifest any time that there's ministry work to do. Anytime the word of God is mentioned, anytime you're giving a testimony or you're, or you're witnessing to somebody, the anointing of the fire shows up and it allows you to speak the word of God. Scriptures come up out of you that you're like, I, I, I haven't used that in a long, but it wasn't for that time, it was for this time. See, that's the anointing of fire. When we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not only can we receive a powerful prayer language, but there are other things we can do up under the heavens right here on earth. Yes. So, so I, I mentioned earlier, because I'm always getting before myself, praise and worship. As you walk in through the door, you're coming with the, the understanding that I'm coming to meet. This is, this is a sacred place. This is a holy ground. This is a house of prayer. This is where you go when you can let go of the things of the world and you're with the saints of God and then they can lift you up and encourage you and build you up. This is why, this is why we show up mm -hmm. on Sunday. Not, not just to hear the word. Yes, you're going to hear the word, but you're also going to be among those believers that are like you and you can say, Ooh, now I can you know, if the darts start coming in, I got somebody that's going to pray with me and get the darts off of me. But you shouldn't spill any kind of bad way when you're here because we should be loving among one another. But, but, but you walk in with the anticipation that I'm coming because I need a touch from the Lord. Oh, yes, he can touch you at home. But he also says where there are two or three gathered together in my name, I am where I'm yet in the so we're coming and we're giving praise and worship unto God and we're, we're bringing in the angels of the Lord around us and he's listening to us doing worship and he's watching us doing praise and, and he's hearing that we're giving him glory today and he's smiling down upon you and he just said, ask what you will. During that time of worship, you can ask God what you will. You don't have to wait on the preacher to call you up. You're already in front of the preacher, the master, the king of kings and the lord of lords. Ask what you will. Jenna spoke uh, Wednesday night about certain diseases and demons or attacks that come, from, come to an individual or to churches. Things that are being said about you or things that have been said about your household or things that have been said about your pastor or things you done said about church or your household or your pastor. <clears throat> I'm just saying. You know, and she said, you know, those things come out and we have the power and anointing to send those things back to where they came. Yes. That's the Holy Spirit anointing and fire. 
to send that thing back to where it came. Don't hold on to it. Don't keep it. Don't bring it in here. I'm just saying. Okay. Anyway, so go back to fire consumes, burns out the sinful and the unnecessary stuff in our lives. Fire purifies, makes us clean and holy before God. Purify me, Lord. Purify my heart. Praise God. My mind and my thoughts. Fire prepares, makes it tasteful and pleasant for us to eat. Hallelujah. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Fire cheers. When we are caught into a cold grip of despair and discouragement, he cheers us on through victory. Oh, the Holy Spirit is just back there saying, you got this. Oh, you can do this. Oh, you don't have to worry. I'm with you. Call upon the name of Jesus. He just reminds us. Fire softens. The Holy Spirit softens the heart of the sinner to repentance. The fire I'm talking about is about spiritual fire that causes demons and sicknesses to be uncomfortable to the point that they leave your presence. You know, you kind of wonder why God chose fire when he could have chose rain, snow, clouds. Why did he choose fire? Because all those things cannot, it's like fire is tangible. Okay, I know we got clouds, but I don't think about them that much. I know we got rain, but when it rains, you know, I go to another realm of mind. <laughs> but when I think about fire, I can just like feel it. And I think God wanted us to know something tangible because the Spirit of God is tangible. It's not, not imaginary. You can feel it. You can touch it. And if you got the right eyesight, you can see it. In the book of Hebrews, it tells us that our God is a consuming fire, Hebrews 12 and 29, and he desires to have and will have a church on fire. He will have a church on fire. And I desire to be in that church. That every time we step foot, it's what you're going to do today, God. If don't do it, Moses said, God, if you don't go, I'm not going. If you don't need me, oh, I'm not going to go. Mm -hmm. Moses was just that sure of the power of God that if God goes before me, whatever he said is going to happen, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So God said, I will have a church on fire. A church on fire cares for souls. Mm -hmm. If you're in a church, because I know we're on air other places, and you have people or congregation or your pastor or your leadership does not care about souls, but they care about the natural things of man. You're in the wrong place. Yes, yes, yes. If they don't care about getting souls saved and, and feeding the needs of those that God put before you, you're in the wrong place. And the reason that I said that, because it was okay for us not to go, Jesus would never say it, go into all the world because there are going to be people that need to hear what you have that I placed inside of you. So to him it was important, then it makes it important to us. And the reason that he came is so that he can bring many souls back to God. Souls back to God. So a church on fire cares about souls. Fire empowers. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts 1, 18, 1, 8, excuse me. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Do you have the power of God this morning? Do you know that the power of God rests upon you? Yes. 
Do you know that the power of God lives inside of you? Do you know that you can speak a thing and declare a thing by the power of God and it will come to pass? If the power is not in you today, if you question today, is the power of God in me? Because it will help you live right. It will help you love the unlovable. It will teach you the right things to say. It will stop you from holding grudges. It will get rid of the offense. It will turn your life around. If the power of God is inside of you, there is nothing by the grace of God you can't do. Nothing by the grace of God you can't do. Your feelings don't even matter when the power of God comes around. Your feelings don't even matter. What you talking about? If feelings was important, when the Sadducees talked about Jesus, he could have said, oh, I can't do anything else because my feelings are hurt. We got a bunch of hurt Christians. Sad but true. I'm leaving the church because they hurt my feelings. Where's your power? I'm not coming to church today because you hurt my feelings. Where's your anointing? I'm not coming to church because that sister looked at me funny. Probably with your hat on. Anyway, so, so understand the power of God is greater than that. We, I'm going to say it again. We dummy God down to the point that we think he act like we do. God is nothing like us. He thinks nothing like us. He don't care about the things of the world. Oh, God ain't going to like that. God don't like ugly. That ain't true. And I ain't going to tell you how I know it. See, we try to make God equal to us. That will never happen. Because God is greater. And so we think that if, if I say something, you know, this is what God is thinking, he's going to act like this. No, he's telling you in his word how he acts. And he's saying, get in the word. And then you'll know who I am. God just wants the fire of him to burn in us. That's what we do. When we are truly on fire, you don't hide behind religious walls. Oh, God's not going to ask me to do that. Or God's going to make me do this a hundred times before he heals me. Or God's going to make me say it and turn around in circles before he do anything. No, not so. God is not a transitional God. If God was a transitional God, he wouldn't save anybody else. He's done enough that he don't need anybody else. God has never been in a place, and people will say this, going back to Pentecostal days, if you're not in every service, that back then it was church service, it was Bible study, it was midweek service, it was uh, uh, the bishop uh, apostle coming down, it was, y'all know what I'm talking about, you went to church a hundred times a week, and people still backslid, because we were coming to church for the people. Or for the man, or for the friends, and when we were young, for the boys. But that ain't, God doesn't need any of that. If that was so, when, when Hezekiah said, God, didn't I do this, and didn't I do that, and didn't I stood before you, and I did what you asked me to do? And God could have said, yeah, but you're still going to die. But no, God said, told the prophet, go back and tell him I would add 50 more years. Or when it came to the point that you messed, what we call messed up, but we never messed up. Thank you for the grace of God. And, and, and we think that God would never take care of us again, but David said, and we know David messed up. Yeah. But he never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he sees that. So once I'm righteous, and if I mess up tomorrow, you mean God's going to take everything from me? I already know that ain't true. I can tell you my life. I know that ain't true. God judged the faithful. He judged the heart. He said, man, look at the outward appearance. But I look at your heart. I know what you're thinking. I know how you're feeling. I know when you regretted what you did. And I'm going to restore you back to a place of peace. That's God. But remember, and we always remember, that God judges us on our righteousness, on our faithfulness, but he also judges on our temperature. Okay, what do you mean by temperature? How to cold? Amen? In the book of Revelation, there were two churches with temperature problems. One was 
the church where God says you are neither hot nor cold, but you're lukewarm. I'm, 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 again, straddle the fence. I don't want to get too hot, and I don't want to be too cold. But understanding then, God says you're lukewarm. I'm going to do what? Spew you out of my mouth. Because you haven't decided either I'm God or I'm not God. Make a choice. Choose you this day who you will serve. And then in church in Ephesians, in Revelation 2, 1 through 7, it talks about where they left their first love. When you made it about religion and not about God. When you make it about God, he takes care of the rest. Yes. But when you make it about religion, people fail you. And you blame God. People fail you. And you blame God. But what you need to do at that time when you're mad with the person is to tell God to burn up the chaff inside of you. Because he's already going to deal with that other person. You can make somebody righteous. Only God can. But you can listen to God. And as he pours righteousness into your vessel, you can get it right. He says not to do this. Having the form of godliness. Don't try to impress me. Don't try to impress the church. Don't try to impress the world. If you're not real with God, it's time to get right. If you don't feel you have the Holy Ghost and power to keep you, today is the day. Because only God can change you. Only God can save you. We can pretend all day long. We can sing songs to the roosters come home. But if we're not true, God says, man looks at the outward appearance, but I know your heart. Matter of fact, he says, I know your thoughts even before you think them. I know what you were going to do before you did it. And I still called you into the kingdom. Why? Because I love you with an everlasting love. Yes. <clears throat> See, that's the difference. I don't need a transaction. He just wants your love. And with that love and obedience to God. He's going to do everything he said in his word he would do. Fill you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Bow your head. Father God, in Jesus' name. Whew. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that you never leave us nor forsake. I thank you, Lord God, that your people are in this place today. That we call upon you to do for us what we need to survive on this earth. God, God we call upon heaven to infuse us today. For those that feel like they haven't heard your voice in a while. For those that feel like they, they, they've lost their anointing, God. For those that feel like they're not safe enough, God. Would you please impart in them? The power of your Holy Ghost. Anoint them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Let their inward man speak the truth of who you are so they will know who they are in you. God, I pray right now in Jesus' name that every evil thought that may have come up is cast to the ground. Because no man can elevate above the name of Jesus. Lord, we call upon you today, Jesus, to be the author and the finisher of our faith. We call upon you today, Lord God, to lead and guide us in all truth. Lord God, we call upon you because we need you more than ever before. God, we call upon you because we're in a dying generation and we need to do what you have called us to do. God, we call upon you for life, for health, and for strength. God, we call upon you today to reach deep down in the souls of man and create in them a new heart and a rightful spirit.
God, so that we can pray against this earth filled with hate and destruction. The people are dying from one side to the other, but the church needs the Holy Ghost and the fire, Lord God, to call things that are not as though they are, and we can stand against the wiles of the devil. We need the Holy Ghost and fire living and speaking through each and every one of us. Lord God, so that we can pray for this deceitful generation. We need you, Jesus, to show us how to love one another, how to love the unlovable, how to pray for those that we deem less than we are. God, you love us all the same. Teach us what your love looks like today, God. Let your Holy Ghost rule and reign in our lives, in our hearts, and in our minds. Let the fire of God touch us right now, God, in Jesus' name. Let the Holy Ghost and fire move in this house. Through every seat, through every aisle. Above every head in this place, God, let your Holy Ghost and power move, God. Change us, oh God. Make us new. Change us, oh God. So that we can be more, more and more like you. Change us, oh God. Help us to be steadfast and unmovable. We rest in you, Lord. Let your Holy Ghost and fire fill us, Lord. We are crying out for you today. Touch our heart, Lord. Touch our heart, Lord. Change us, O God. Like only you can. We wait on you, Jesus. We wait on you, Lord. We wait on you, Lord. Jesus. To anyone under the sound of my Not sure that you have the Holy Ghost and fire. You, you just don't understand it enough to say, I, I, I understand what you're talking about, but I'm not I'm not sure I've ever asked God to totally come in my life and, and take over the things that I'm holding on to. I'm, I'm not sure that, that I turn over everything to Him. Juan, can you do me a favor? Can you find Shekinah glory yes for me? Thank you. It's raining in my spirit, and I just want to play a little song. Because I, I don't think we got to come to a place where we get through and we just run out. Or we just get through and it's time to, to just start, you know, visiting. I, I, I think we're, we're at a place where that, that God has said, okay, you've got me here. <laughs> You got me here. And, and that place that you want to be or that place that you're trying to get or those you have, if you're not sure today that God is your Lord and your Savior and, and you're, you're concerned, <laughs> hallelujah, that, 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 that I'm missing something. I, 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 you know, I don't know what you're missing because God is a complete God. But, but, but I know that the adversary will come and he'll try to tell you these things that, that you know you, you don't have it yet or you got it. You just need to use it. Yes. I think Pastor had a phrase he was saying if you don't use it you lose it so so the reason the reason that I, I, I just can't release right now is God says I'm here. And, and, and he's willing to fill you to the place that you need to be. See, it doesn't 
take God all day. It, it, it don't even take the laying on of hands. Because God can do whatever you need in the seat that you're in. Because see, it's not my divine connection, it's his divine connection. It's not my power, but it's his power. It's not my glory, but it's his glory. So as, as we sit here today, and we say to the master, infuse me, God, with more of you. I'm not even going to ask for a double anointing until we start using the anointing that he's already given us. But I want him to anoint us with holy boldness today. That I'm not afraid of this thing called the Spirit of God. It is not strange to me, but it's glorious. It is not strange to me, but it's powerful. And I have the ability in my life to use that. And I choose not to. I have the ability to call fire down from heaven and I don't use that. I need to ask myself today, why? Why when God says I have the power that I don't want to use it? What is it in me that is fearful that I don't want to call down fire? If I could be like Joshua and stop the sun from going down while I'm fighting a battle, then I can call down fire to stop destruction, pain, inflammation in my body. I have the ability to call down fire from heaven to burn up things. That's not like God. Oh, I desire to be holy, but I don't want to be holy by myself. I want you to be holy with me. This is not a selfish thing. Jesus came so that all people, all men yes. and women, yes. will be able to do the things that he did. And help me, y'all, not just the things he did, but greater things. See, I'm ready for the greater. Anybody else ready for the greater? Are you, are you tired of the same mundane? Are you ready for the greater? If God says that I can do greater things, what am I doing wrong that I'm not doing them now? Where do I need to be, God? I'm calling on you while you're in this place. Show me where I need to be, God. I'm ready for greater. I'm ready for greater. I don't want to do church as usual, God. I don't want to do church as usual. I don't want to play church no more, saints. I don't want to play church. If God's not in it, I don't want to do it. Yes. If God says I can have the power, I want the power. If Jesus said we can do greater works, Church, why are we not doing it? What's stopping us? What are we afraid of? Why do we don't want to give up? What are we holding on to? What's stopping us? If God says we can have it, why won't we go after it? Have we got so complacent? I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. Quan, did you find the song? Thank you. Would y'all let me just 